Guys, I need help. I don't know if you remember, but... I got arrested. I just don't get it. Okay, so what? I messed up a little bit. I violated Nintendo's user agreement. Oh, man. I don't want to go to court. I'm just not built for it. I don't have the patience. I got it. Go ditch. Oh, man. What if they come for me, though? I'm not going to know what to do. Just give me the Nobel Prize already. So, video games, right? You know, the form of escapism we all take when we're stressed or just want to have a good time. Video games have a way of letting you do things you usually can't do, like be a serial killer. They have a way of sucking you in into a world, whether it be a desolate wasteland, post-apocalyptic world, normal world, or just an overall cartoony world. Welcome to the world of simulators, where the objective of the game is to be as realistic as possible, the exact opposite of what any normal game should be. I mean, there's almost everything. Live simulator, hunting simulators, flying simulators, racing, and that's just because what some people want. Some people want their games as detailed and realistic as possible to where you even need to eat to survive. Personally, I never got this because when I play a game, I don't like to be reminded of real life. But do you want to get taxed in a game whenever you own a home? Even some games that aren't simulators have some realistic mechanics in it, which is just... Uh... Though for only one exception, I don't have any other types of simulators because they're just not my thing. But however, there is one type that I do. Racing simulators. Because what else would I own? They're racing games, but put you on a close track with realistic physics like understeering and oversteering. You have two, sometimes three, and sometimes even four ways of controlling a car. Play with the controller. It's pretty balanced all around. You know, it has analog triggers making accelerating and braking much better than ew. But the analog sticks do kind of make making tight turns a little impossible. Motion controls. This isn't something you use in a lot of games. I don't know why. Yeah, I know I wrecked on about this in Sega Ages. You can find them just a while on any console, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Switch. Why put a racing sim on the Switch when the triggers are digital? This isn't immersive! And of course, the most optimal way to play a racing sim is with the steering wheel. But no thank you, I like not being in huge amounts of debt. <laughs> not to mention, they just play different. You can't just go 100 miles per hour on a street and just lightly tap on the brake button expecting to hit an initial D type drift. No, you're gonna go crashing into a wall. Or just off the track. But my main gripe with racing simulators is they all just look the same. Can you really spot the difference between a Settle Corza and Gran Turismo Sport? Just kidding, they're both a Settle Corza. But the fact that you couldn't tell. Well, what's wrong with you? So, in preparation to ditch court and spend the rest of my life as a fugitive on the run, why not practice with some racing sims? Oh, man. But I have so many. I don't know where to start. Okay, who's the wise guy? Ugh, don't make me play this. Project Cars 2. Uh, man, if there was one word to describe Project Cars 2, Pretty bad. It has barely any handling. Wanna turn tires? You lock up. Slow down so your tires don't lock up? You fall behind. Try to go fast to catch up? Get a warning. It's impossible. I can't even get past this first track. How do you mess up the handling in a racing sim this bad? Like you can't do anything. You always lock up and you never get to turn right. Even with the wheel, it's basically impossible. This game is just not good and all the problems lie with its handling. No force feedback or anything like that to make it smooth. There's even mods on PC to make the handling better. That's how bad it is. And it's not that I suck at racing sims, I'm actually pretty decent. You know, I don't know why, but at first I thought this was going to be an open world arcade racer similar to Forza, but no, it's just another racing sim without car customization or tuning. Why is it even called Project Cars 2 when you can't even have a project car to work on? And not even to mention that this looks worse than Grid Autosport on Switch. How does a game on the Switch look better than a game on the PS4? I heard that Project Cars 2 was one of the best racing games on PS4, but actually playing it... 
I feel lied to. Well, from one pretty bad racing sim to an actual good one, Gran Turismo Sport. It tops Project Cars 2 in every way possible. There's actual content besides racing, like messing with your car's delivery, and a kind of better tuning system. There's practice sessions, challenges, unlockable cars, and music. And taking pictures is pretty fun. Look, here this car passes this other car and gains on the Audi, but wrecks at the corkscrew. Whoops. There's tons of cars in the games, and even tons more to buy. Except you really shouldn't, considering how easy it is to get free cars. But sometimes you should. Seriously, you get a car for completing the daily workout, every eight challenges in the driving school, completing the online etiquette, gold on mastery tracks. Look at all these cars. And not to mention the tracks. Most of them are pretty fun to go through. There's Laguna Seca, a classic, but for some reason the game didn't launch with it. And Trial Mountain. It's missing from the game, but come on, it's been in every GT game up until now. At least it's coming back in Gran Turismo 7. The online is pretty cool, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag. You get some clean races and then you get some dirty races. I don't really spend a lot of time in online mode and to even access it you need to watch racing etiquette videos. But you get a go-kart for doing it and it's actually one of the funner cars to drive in the game. You usually spend most of your time in single player mode unlocking the tracks and cups. There's a lot of cups here, with the funner ones being in the third selection. Here you get to race the faster cars like the Grade 1 cars, Super Formula cars, or even Lewis Hamilton's 2017 Mercedes AMG Patronus F1 car. The grade 1 cars are crazy to control because they go so fast and you have a lot of braking horsepower. And the F1 cars are especially crazy since they have so much downforce you could basically send it into the corners. The Super Formula 1 car is where you can get a little bit more crazy with the liveries. Here's the stock, mine, and then here's the one I have on currently. The livery for the Scuderia Ferrari F1 team. You could apply other liveries from other F1 teams like Mercedes or Red Bull. Almost every Gran Turismo game has a sort of charm to it. I don't know how to explain it. It could either be from the music, the visuals, the way everything's presented. It always somehow feels like Gran Turismo. Even this game, and it's nothing like a traditional Gran Turismo game. And the visuals in this game are really good. You, you can just tell by looking here at the pictures in the photo mode, or just driving around or watching the replay. There's moments where it looks pretty realistic, especially in the scrapes mode. It's where you can take a bunch of pictures of your cars with backgrounds, and you can make it look really realistic if you wanted to. Like, and even more to add on, you have a challenge mode and training mode in here. You can go for track mastery and some of these are pretty easy, you could usually do them in your first go. But some of them will take hours and hours of practice to just even get close. Like the final driving school mission, it took me forever to get it to gold. I don't know why I had such a hard time with it. I even put it off for a few months and came back to it. And I still had trouble, and only recently have I finally completed it with gold. And then, even with this many hours, I still haven't completed Gran Turismo Sport. But all of this wouldn't matter if the game handled poorly. And luckily it doesn't. It handles pretty smooth, even with tracks you control off. Most of the cars are fun to handle, and the sound design is just stellar. Just listen. is just so satisfying when you drive so good and smooth and coast through the corners really well. It's definitely one of my favorite racing sims and you could even try to beat Lewis Hamilton's time on a select few tracks for only $7.99 but I'm sure a few of you probably already knew that since it's been out since 2019. And am I gonna do it? Nope. The tracks are pretty fun too. You have some bad ones though like Blue Moon Speedway. It's just too long. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this, this one is just too long. And Special Stage Route X, it's just a really, really long oval. The fun and standout ones are Laguna Seca, Spa, Red Bull Ring, this one which is a name I can't remember off the top of my head right now, Monza, 
and I'm pretty sure another few I'm forgetting a name right now. Point is, this game mostly has it all. You know, why not? We'll just do a quick honorable mention for F1 2020. It's fun, but not as fun as Gran Turismo Sport. There's quite a bit to do here. You have my driver mode where you create your own character, even though none of these look like me, and join an F1 team and just play through 10 seasons or so. And then you have my team mode where you create your own team, whatever you want, play through 10 seasons while managing sponsorships, your team, pay, and all that stuff. It's, I guess you could say it's a little more technical than Gran Turismo. You have to worry about tire management, nowhere to break, braking lines, and all that stuff. And especially the damage of the car. And it's really easy to screw up here. In Gran Turismo Sport, if you go on the grass or hit the curb, you have a chance of coming back. But in F1, nope, you'll just slide out and lose control. At least flashbacks are in the game, which is pretty good, I guess. Well, that was a pretty quick glimpse into Racing Sims. I didn't even go through all the ones that I have, or even that much detail with my experiences with them. That's mostly, though, just because I don't have a lot of time before the police figure out what I'm trying to do. But maybe one day we'll come back to this topic again and go through even more. But for now, I think I have enough skills to be able to avoid the police. Oh man. What if they start being more aggressive? Oh my gosh.